Welcome to the next mailbag. Um, so the astute will notice that several mailbags I'm recording together um, because I'm not changing my T-shirt. <laughs> Remember, these are mailbag um, items. These are comments and questions you guys leave on the channel. But before we get going, let's hit the normal parish notices. So if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. If you want to be notified when new content like this hits the channel, hit the bell icon. The channel is funded by me. If you want to help the creation of content, etc., go over and consider supporting me on Patreon. That's www.patreon.com forward slash the music tech guy. And unfortunately, we are still in the COVID 19 lockdown era. So stay at home, stay safe, uh, wash the pinkies until Boris tells us not to. Now back to the main part of this video. Okay, first one in this session comes from Kieran Mitchell. And he writes, I've been trying to connect my Roland TD-15 drum kit to my computer for the first time uh, to play with GarageBand Stroke Logic. My Mac has auto updated to Catalina, which is 10.15. Uh, my Mac uh, and the TD-15 is not being recognized as being connected. I can't seem to find the drivers for the TD-15 either. I've tried using the TD-15 drivers for older version, OS versions, but it's not worked working. Do you have any advice? Cheers. So this is in response to a video I did uh, early part of this year in January, end of January 2020, um, where I did a video about upgrading drivers um, because of the implementation of Catalina. Um, now, I think in the video about four minutes 20 in, um, in that particular video, I should say, there is a section about checking the security um, of a recent driver installation. Now, what's happened with thir when 13 came in, not so much with 14, because 13 already made the changes, and then again when 15 came in, is Roland, uh, sorry, Roland, Apple have actually made some fairly big changes to the security mechanism. Um, and one of these changes is that if you load a driver from a non-Apple uh, source, the OS will probably block it by default because that's what it's set up to do. Um, and what you have to do is within 30 minutes of loading the driver on the machine, you have to go into security and you have to um, unblock it. And if you don't do it within 30 minutes, then you're going to have to uninstall the drivers and start again um, because you can't, after that 30 minute window is out, effectively the security exception has expired and you've got to go, you've got to go around the whole loop again. Um, uh, and that kind of might get you over the line. The the issue is, I don't think it will. Um, and the reason I say that is because having looked at this, I found that the uh, the last update for the TD15 driver um, was quite a few versions of the operating system ago, and I seem to remember it sort of being something like 10.09 at um, a guess. Uh, and it's a 32-bit driver. And Apple were very vocal before Catalina came out in saying that they are now only supporting 64-bit drivers on their 64-bit operating system, which kind of means that if you've got a 32-bit driver, which I suspect this TD15 driver is, then the likelihood of it working on Catalina is pretty much slim to none. Um, and unfortunately, I think the honest answer is you're you're a bit stuffed, uh, and this kind of kind of annoys me. Um, in fact, it kind of really annoys me because you've got effectively a perfectly serviceable piece of equipment that you can't use how that equipment was designed to be used, i.e., plugged into your Mac to trigger things within main stage, superior drama, logic, whatever it happens to be. And I think as a community, we should be really raising support calls with Rollins to get these unsupported drivers updated um, because I think it's unresponsible of Roland as a manufacturer to effectively cease support of these pieces of equipment, which are perfectly serviceable, there's nothing wrong with them, but they effectively are um, making them obsolete by not continuing to update the drivers and fix driver issues 
caused by manufacturers or operating system manufacturers doing operating system updates. So at the moment, there is still Windows 10 support on the TD15 as far as I can see, but Catalina support is not there. Um, now, you know, and, and I also think that Roland should be shot for producing pieces of equipment that don't follow cast compliant standards. Because if it was a class compliant standard, you wouldn't need a driver because the drivers would already be there. Um, and with most Roland equipment, definitely with all the boutiques uh, and the Jupiter and the JDs and um, what else, the Aria equipment, you have to load a driver onto your machine for it to work. You can't just plug it in and hope it works. It's not, it doesn't work that way. So. Um, I think that that is wrong. We as a community should be lobbying Roland to make sure that if they have issued a piece of equipment within the last 10 years that claims to be uh, USB uh, supported, they should be issuing drivers and all the other stuff to maintain support for that machine, even if they've discontinued production. Um, now, of course, back in the day, when the, you had MIDI, you had a five pin MIDI DIN cable, you didn't care about operating system updates. Now it's getting really imperative that before you do an operating system update to one of these things, you have to think about all the drivers and all the equipment you've got plugged into it and whether it's going to work post-upgrade. Post and as we've seen with Catalina, Catalina has stopped stuff working. Okay, the next one comes from Andreas Moll, and he says, I can definitely say that the A80 looks far better than the brand new A88 Mark II. Um, again, in response to the SMR on the Roland A80 that I did in September 2017. Um, well, one of the things I can say is the A80 is considerably heavier than the A88 Mark II. Um, in terms of, I can tell you now that the A18 needs two people to lift it. I've lifted it myself, but I normally encourage somebody else to be there when I'm lifting it because it is very, very heavy. Um, and I'm not sure how I, how the A88 is, but given the fact that it, for starters, will not have a uh, transformer in it and it does not have a solid key bed the same as the A80, it will be lighter for those two elements, definitely. Um, the new controller claims to have um, the same action as the mid-range FP pianos. Um, I was watching uh, Woody over on Piano Shack do a review of the A88 Mark II. Um, now, as far as I'm aware, this is not the same action on the high-end Phantoms, uh, FP pianos and RD models. So those top of the range models, it's not the same action as those, but the the lower range models, so uh, it is the same action as those. Um, the A80 keyboard, as far as I remember, is I think the RD1000 uh, keybed, which was phenomenally popular at the time. The RD1000 was a phenomenal workhorse if you had one of those. Um, the other main thing I noticed with the A80 and the A88 Mark II is there is no screen on the on the on the unit itself, so uh, you do need a laptop or a workstation to be present to actually understand what's going on on your MIDI controller, uh, rather than what you could do with the A80, which is you could look at the screen and understand what the A80 was doing, um, because there was no computer interface. Um, and the last thought, or maybe of concern, um, is related to what I said on the previous um, comment is all about this class compliancy and driver and loading drivers, etc. Um, you know, many people have been upgrading to find that their perfectly serviceable Roland equipment has suddenly stopped talking to their computer. Um, and that's, I think, is going to be an issue going forward. And you know, it sort of kind of sort of puts me back into my legacy tech mode because, as you know, this channel was born out of my love for legacy tech. Uh, in legacy tech mode, you have a five pin MIDI DIN cable, and to be honest, five pin MIDI DIN works with everything. So, the next one comes from Alexandra Senna, um, and this is in response to the DX7 restoring from cartridge video I did way back in. April 2016. 
And she writes, this is great. Any pointers to do the same, but without the original cartridge? I guess it is possible by SysX. It is indeed. Um, I'm asking this because the synth pops on screen with a message battery issue, but I imagine once it is replaced, I need to reload all the info again, but don't own the cartridge. Any help will be greatly appreciated. Thanks. Unfortunately, I would have done a video about this, and I'm surprised I haven't done a video about this. Um, and I suspect the reason why I haven't done a video about this is because I use the cartridge all the time to do factory restores on my DX7 because I have the cartridge. Um, we are in the midst of COVID-19 and most of my equipment um, is actually in storage in a storage facility which is shut. Um, I was able to liberate a few bits that were stored around friends' houses and bring them back um, here. Um, but I haven't been able to bring very much because there wasn't very much uh, stored in the alternative locations. Um, so I apologize for that, um, but there are some, some key pointers I can give you here. The first is uh, the key to restoring the factory settings on DX7 is to remember that this keyboard is very old and therefore doesn't run very quickly. Um, so even though I've done this many times, I've never filmed it. So the first tip is, and uh, the video will be down below, um, and it is the DX7 restore video, and it talks about disabling the protects on the DX7. And it's about a minute into that video, so go and have a look at that video, the, the link to which will be down below. Um, and that will talk about how to disable the memory protects. And remember, once you finish the procedure, you need to put the memory protects back on. But with the memory protects on, uh, effectively, if you try to do a bulk data dump onto the DX7, it will just reject it. It just ignores it completely, okay? Um, and the, sext, the second thing to do is, as I said, these, this machine is very old. It doesn't run very quickly in terms of its ability to process data. Okay, so with a modern machine, you can probably process, run the thing at, at megabits. Okay, but on the older machines, we're talking about running the machine at bytes or kilobytes. Okay, which is considerably different to megabits per second. Um, and we're probably talking that you need to run this thing at around about 64 bytes per second, I would imagine. Um, and if you go and look at the uh, video I did on the T1 about backing the T1 up, uh, where I talk about setting up MIDI OX to actually talk to um, the uh, DX, sorry, the T1, I wouldn't have thought that at 64 bytes that your, the, the settings are going to be that dissimilar. So go and have a look at that video. The link is going to be down below, and it's about three minutes in. I talk about OX speed setup. Um, and when lockdown finishes, I will go and grab my DX7 and I will do a video on this because I get asked this quite a lot. Okay, last one for this section, or this mailbag segment, um, comes from Guitar Plo. Um, and he asks uh, two questions actually. Uh, one is how to clone information from another DXD70. Is it possible for my to to my memory card, which is an M512E? Uh, I find another unit and I will try tomorrow. But thinking first to format the card on it and then copy all the data on the card, and then we'll try to like your tutorial. Uh, that was the first question. And the second question is, uh, my OS is 1.10 and trying many times to send uh, my keyboard the SysX, but not successful normally. I got the sound, but the, letter, but the letters. Um, and I also have an old version of the motherboard. Two, they told me not possible to upgrade to new, with new EEPROMs. Uh, my board is April 1990. Um, sometimes the cables uh, with cheap uh, interface is wrong and we'll try with the Ed roll by Roland again will not work. Um, so this is in response to the D70 and I apologize for the, the 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 English. That's literally how he writes it so I assume he's not an English speaker by, by nature. Um, anyway, this was the D70 reload and factory setting presets. Now, um, I'll start with the first question. Um, 
the factory restore card is just an EEPROM. That's all it is. It's uh, the the memory card that Roland pushed out. So the 256 and the 512 cards that Roland pushed out from saving your patches to, um, they're RAM, so they're volatile memory, and they had to have a battery. If I remember correctly, they had to have a battery in them um, to work, whereas an EEPROM is a um, read-only uh, chip. So you effectively burn the... Burn the um, the data into the chip permanently, and then you have to have a, a proper EEPROM reader writer to effectively reburn data into them. Um, and I have to be honest and say, although I have never tried copying the system data up onto a 512 card, I see no reason why it will not work, because in essence, that is all that the factory restore card is, although it is a read only card, not a read write card. Um, so, as long as you properly restore, you, you properly format the card for the D70, and then tell the D70 to effectively do a data dump to the card, um, you should be able to store all the factory settings on that particular card, and then go onto another D70 and download those settings. And funny enough, I've had lots of it, lots of questions around this whole area uh, recently, um, including uh, Anders Jensen. Um, who is the guy who does the theme music for the 8-Bit guy. Um, he's uh, been in contact with me seeing if he can get hold of the MIDI uh, and the SysX, which I have managed to find. Um, so obviously in all the disruption of me moving moving houses and moving in with the with the housemates, etc., I have actually managed to find the, the relevant MIDI file um, for restoring. But he had he's had a nightmare restoring his D70. Um, by all accounts, reading between the lines from the emails that we've been exchanging, uh, so that's that's kind of the the first thing. Uh, the other thing to remember is when you do do a restore, the restore is not effective on a D70 unless you do a power off and power back on, and a lot of people think it hasn't worked when they do a restore because it still comes up kind of gobbledygook, uh, and the reason for that is because the 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 reset procedure doesn't complete until you power the machine off and on. Um, and the second part uh, from the OS comment. Now, I'm assuming that this is Mac OS 1.10, um, but I could be wrong um, <laughs> because you're not specified particularly what OS you're talking about, whether it's the, the board OS or the board, board firmware or whether it's your computer. Um, now, uh, if it is Mac OS 1.10, that's good because the Edroll driver <laughs> still works on that platform. Um, but if you move the Mac OS any further forward, the Edroll driver is not going to work. So, um, But my advice to anybody out there who is doing SysX dumps to legacy tech via MIDI is get yourself a really, really simple uh, MIDI sport type interface. You know, a two-in two out style interface usb interface and the reason i say that is because i have found that doing sysx dumps to legacy keyboards can be an utter pain in the bum if you're using a larger interface now i have as you probably well know a mio 10 uh, which is an eye connectivity device works beautifully for me when i'm doing stuff okay Absolutely fantastic. Until you start trying to do a SysX dump to a machine, then the machines complain like hell that they don't want to accept the file. And what I find is by taking the MIDI jack out of the icon activity and plugging the MIDI jack from the machine into the MIDI sport and sending the SysX dump through the MIDI sport, it tends to work every single time. Um, and the only thing I can say to that is because the MIDI Sport is a much more simpler device um, than the Mio Icon Activity. And as I said, I've got no issues with the Mio. It works beautifully in all other situations apart from this one specific use case. Um, oh, use case, that's me. That's my work coming in. Um, uh, so that's kind of what I would recommend, and I'd recommend it to anybody else on this channel. Uh, who's watching this video, if you intend to restore uh, files to legacy tech, get yourself a simple interface to do it with. Because 
it will save a lot of head scratching in terms of trying to set the more complex interface up to do this particular function, which you're only going to do, well, you probably won't do very often. Um, and I say that, and of course, somebody will now shout at me and say, I do it all the time. But um, that's that's the first thing. And the second thing is remember, like I said to the previous question on, on this section, was these are old machines. Okay, they don't run very fast. So you may have to really drop the communication rate down. Um, and where you, how fast you can run it might be a bit trial and error. Now I seem to remember that I can run my DX7 interface at 128 kilobytes. Um, but don't quote me on that because I haven't got my, my, my D70 here. Um, so I can't test it. But I seem to recall that it was it would run, it would run quite nicely at 128 kilobytes, but any faster than that. So if you went up to the next range, which would be 256 kilobytes, it started to throw error messages. So just be aware of that. Um, and if, let me get, let me know how you get on. You know, it'd be interesting to find out what what where you get to.